Good morning and welcome to Central Christian Church Bradenton. Thank you for joining us in this worship experience where we'll sing songs to our God, pray prayers of thanksgiving and confession and petition for those that we love. We will hear some readings from the Holy Scriptures and we'll hear a message from the Holy Spirit. Join us as we share a meal at the Lord's table. I hope at home you've prepared something to eat and drink uh, to join us together in communion when we get to that part. Now, this week we're in our third week of what well, I've been meaning to ask series of connection, of courage, of curiosity with each other. We have one more week, and then we're going to have a special conversation church on July 25th. It's going to be something special. I hope if you're local, you will be able to come and join us. Either way, uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, again, for those who may be in the local area and watching from home or from work, uh, I want to remind you that this Friday is our monthly movie night for our joyful friends and families. Uh, so uh, we look forward to seeing you. It's at 6.15 in the evening. And this week we're going to watch the new Disney movie, Luca. Uh, it's, I've gotten some great reviews. I've heard some awesome things from some friends who've seen it. I can't wait to watch it together with you. Now let us prepare our hearts to worship our God as Mickey plays What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
you need. For whispers of, I've been thinking of you, and I've been meaning to ask. This must be the place because all belong here. All are welcome here. All hurt and joy, need and prayers, dreams and love are welcome. So for our call to worship today, we are going to learn into this invitation for connection. Let's put everything on pause for a minute. If you're with somebody, share a blessing that you had this week. And if you're alone, share the blessing with God. And now we will hear a hymn of praise. Immortal, invisible God, only wise. And what can I give? conversation with our Lord when we get to come before him with our prayers with our praises with our Thanksgiving with the petitions for those that we love and with the confessions for when we've been unfaithful if you've got something that you need us to pray for with you we, for our whole church community to pray or our small little prayer team that meets every Thursday, just send in the prayer request uh, via email or uh, text me. Uh, uh, each week we put that together on Wednesday, so if you send it to us by Wednesday, it'll be in the bulletin and be uh, 
prayed for by our prayer team on Thursdays. So I'll start us off in a, uh, a prayer and then give us time for private one-on-one -on -one communion with God and then close us out with community prayer. Let us pray. God of all seasons, times long and short, in the words of Paul, do your best to come to us quickly. Come to us with loud praise and joy or appear to us in a still, small voice. Come to us through friends or come to us through strangers. Come to us in this text and in this hour of worship. Come to us quickly if you can. We are seeking you. We are always seeking you with grateful hearts cracked open by love we pray hear our prayers Lord, we are so thankful for the good, positive doctor's visit Cheryl had uh, in recovery from her eye surgery. Lord, we know she has a ways to go, but we were thankful for your answer to prayer that the recovery seems to be going in a way the doctor thinks will lead to success. We are so thankful, Lord. She remains on our heart. Lord, we're thankful for Sophia also that her recovery from her car accident is going well. Another praise and answer to prayer. We continue to lift her healing up to you, Lord, and her family. We lay at your feet Barbara, Lord, who just got a diagnosis of cancer. The word that is still so scary to so many of us. May you be with her and give her strength, be with her family, give them comfort and peace as they work through that healing process. Lord, what a blessing you gave me in my first visit with Manatee Springs as a volunteer chaplain. <laughs> what awesome people I met, Lord. Talk about meeting you through strangers. I did that on Tuesday. You were there amongst us. May you bless that new ministry, Lord, that through you I might provide some comfort and peace and show them love. Lord, we've had some new worshipers with us online and in person over the last few weeks and we ask that everything we do on these Sunday services, our songs, our prayers, our readings, is all for your glory, all to show your love in our lives. May they receive a blessing and hear and feel the presence of your Holy Spirit as they join us. God of the here and now, how we need you. This world seems to turn upside down all the time. Our center of gravity feels off. 
In moments like these, we're particularly grateful for the care you offer and the stability of friends. So today we say prayer of thanks for the people in our life who take the time to ask, what do you need? Gracious God, help us to be those people for others. Give us the eyes to see when our neighbors are in need and the wisdom to ask, what do you need? Stop our assumptions cold in their tracks and instead carve out a space in us just to listen. We are practicing breathing deeply. We are practicing being still. We are practicing opening ourselves up to you. We are practicing listening, slowly and intentionally. We are practicing sitting with our pain and honoring it. We are practicing saying what we need and not being afraid to ask for help. And in all of this, we need you. Oh, how we need you. With deep gratitude and with true humility, we pray the words your son taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our first scripture reading is going to be brought to us by one of our online congregants who is faithful in joining us in worship uh, and in Bible study through the week. Uh, Tammy Jacobs, who lives up in North Carolina, is a, a niece of one of our members here. Uh, so uh, let's listen to her share with us from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Hey, I'm reading this for the pastor of my Aunt Wendy Church. This is how we know what is love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Thank you, Tammy. And now let us sing together our hymn of proclamation, Make Me a Servant. Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demaeus, 
because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Titus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander, the metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him, because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. This week's question, what do you need? Recognizes that we all have needs and that we need each other. It reminds us that we have each individually unique needs and we can't assume to know what's best for others. It prompts us to reflect on our own needs, priorities and desires, which sometimes in some circumstances can be difficult to figure out. What do you need? such a direct and, and vulnerable question to ask. It's not limiting like, can I bring you over a casserole over to your house? It's open-ended. And when we offer this question to another, we don't know how they're going to respond. In our reading, Paul responds with needs and wants and a desire for justice. Paul offers us this glimpse of intense humility as he opens himself up to share what he needs. The grievances, the stuff, all of it's important. Offering space for folks to respond openly and honestly about what they need is a sacred act. Beaten and imprisoned, Paul writes to Timothy with a simple request Come quickly. He lists those who abandoned him, but says, I hope God doesn't hold it against them. In this greatest moment of need, Paul doesn't need revenge, but instead is asking for companionship. In the simplest sense, that's what we all need, for someone to come quickly to gather up the items we need and simply show up. Paul's actions have returned to him. While he was in a position of power as Saul, he persecuted people of the faith, and now he sits alone at the end of his life, beaten and imprisoned for his own beliefs. It would make sense to me that Paul would be in turmoil, filled with guilt for his former actions and troubled with resentments. He lists people who've abandoned him, which might have led him to ask Timothy to hold them to account. However, Paul chooses another way. May it not be counted against them, he says. Perhaps he's able to offer forgiveness because of the blinding forgiveness that he received. And maybe he even was able to forgive himself. What does Paul need at the end of his days? He needs companionship and he needs it quickly. He needs his cloak to wrap around him. He wants the company of some of his books so he can keep his mind engaged. He wants his writing materials, his papyrus, so he can share his wisdom and proclaim the good news. He could have passed his bitterness along to Timothy, but instead expresses gratitude for God's provision. 
I believe the foundation of this text is forgiveness. Forgiveness transforms Paul's life. It enables him to seek companionship and comfort instead of vengeance. And it's the essence of the message that he carries. In receiving forgiveness, reaching out for compassion, and letting go of guilt and resentment, he is free. You know, sometimes it's not until somebody asks me, what do you need? that I even stop to think about what my needs are. And even then, my first reaction is often something I need for work or for somebody else. I might say, um, I need somebody to pick up some snacks for Sunday morning. Occasionally, they'll reply with something like, okay, I can get somebody to pick up some snacks. But I was asking, what do you need? I might say, I need some Chick-fil-A lemonade. Now, I might have some disagreements with their, some of their politics and religious beliefs, uh, but they make darn good lemonade, and I can hold two thoughts in my head <laughs> and have disagreements with them politically or theologically, uh, but still love their lemonade. And it makes me feel good, and I want some. If it's a quieter moment, where it's just the two of us that are together, and, and I was asked, what do you need? I might think about something bigger, more meaningful, deeper. I need to know I'm following God's will and teaching in the way I'm interacting with my kids. Or I need help sticking with my diet and li li living a more healthy lifestyle. Then they'll say, uh, oh, okay, I was just going to the fellowship hall to get a drink and wanted to see if you wanted one, uh, but thanks for sharing that. When we ask people about their needs, it's a special thing. I would even say it's a sacred thing because it can connect us into a deeper relationship with one another. Because on both sides of the question, whether you're asking the question or you're getting the question, there's intention and consent. If I'm the one asking, what do you need? I'm putting myself in a place where I don't know how you're going to respond. Now, of course, I can sort of bracket it and say, hey, I'm going to the fellowship hall. What do you need? And, and you may ask for something or not, because implied in the way I asked it, you knew I was saying that hey, if there's something in the fellowship hall you want, I can get it for you, but otherwise, I'm not getting it. That's not on the list of things that you can ask and answer that question with right now. But it also can be asked in a very broad way. Tell me, what do you need? I'm asking what you need. I don't know how you'll respond. So it's an act of faith and curiosity and respect when I offer that question to someone. Now, as the person who is asked, I also have a choice. I get to say yes, no, maybe. I can choose to enter this relationship. I can choose to respond. And I get to choose the level of my vulnerability and the depth and breadth of my response. If I'm feeling safe and, and, and it's someone I know loves me and cares for me and I'm in the right place, I may respond like Paul with a whole list of things. Everything from there is something in the fellowship hall I want to here's the, the deepest desires and longings of my soul or anything in between. I think that's the special part of leaning into one another and offering ourselves to listen. Because the thing that we need most often is not found in the refrigerator. It's not found in the lemonade from Chick-fil-A. It's sometimes something that can't happen. I can't heal your parent who's been in the hospital for two weeks. 
I can't fix a problem you're having at your job. Sometimes all we can do is witness the fact that you have this need. And I can hear it. And I can hold it. And I can be another person who knows that you have it. Of course, we want things to be beautiful and wonderful. We want health and well-being and all the good things. But it shouldn't stop us from stepping up with intention and faith to lean in, to connect with one another, and to ask, what do you need? Please join me in prayer. Lord, Give us the courage to ask that of those that we care about. Friends and strangers alike, Lord, because we should care about them also. Give us the courage when asked to be vulnerable and share, and share what we need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. One of the things I love most about this church is we're never alone. We help each other in so many ways. One of the things I love most about this church is that on our hardest days and longest nights, we are never alone. Paul needed Timothy. Jesus needed his disciples. We need each other. So today, you're invited to this table. And you know you're not invited alone. You, your neighbors, your family, your friends, and those you haven't even met yet are all invited. Look around. There's something special here. We need each other. We are all invited together. So come to the table. You are not alone. For our Lord, on the night he was to be betrayed, gave us this practice to remember while sharing a meal with his disciples, his closest friends, he took some bread. Having given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took a cup. And having poured it out, he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Mine and yours, my friends. He said, it is the blood of the new covenant, and I shall not drink it with you again until we drink it fresh together in my Father's kingdom, giving us the promise of eternal life. Let us prepare our hearts to receive these emblems of life, Christ's life, death and resurrection as our elder leads us in prayer be with us in our waiting and in our prayers be with us in our joy and our sorrow be in our relationships that we might be blessed with friends who support us and that we might be the friend who can bless others be with us in this meal that is might remind us that we are never alone, that you are always coming quickly to our side, sitting with us in the pain and drawing us together as a community. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the body of Christ, take and eat. Friends and family, the blood of Christ, take and drink. Let us pray. 
loving God and Jesus Christ, with gratitude for your holy nourishment about this table, we dedicate our lips to be the hopeful voice of Christ to the despairing, our hands to reach out in Christ's name to heal the broken, our feet to walk with Christ to visit those who are shunned, our bodies to be Christ's living sacrifice to break the power of death. Take us, empower us, use us. Amen. When we love someone in need, it's easy to give. We show up with casseroles and prayer blankets. We, we send cards and make phone calls. We babysit the kids and drop off flowers. We don't think twice about it because when we love someone we need, it's easy to give. In worship, when we give to the offering, what we are is also declaring that it's not just those we love that are worthy of gifts, but God is worthy of our gifts. And strangers whom we never met are worthy of our gifts. In worship, when we give an offering, we're declaring that all of creation deserves love and care, which is a radical notion in this hurting world. So today, practice being in relationship and drawing closer to one another. I invite you to give to the mission and ministry of this church. For when we love, it's always easy to give. And think about what that gift will be as we sing this last song together. They'll know we are Christians by our love. together as we say this affirmation of faith together. We believe in relationships. We believe in asking hard questions, in showing up for one another, and in sitting together through pain. We believe in listening with grace, learning with curiosity, and apologizing with sincerity. We believe in asking for help, 
saying what we need and trusting that no degree of vulnerability could strip us of God's love. We believe in trying our best and offering grace when our best is not enough. And we believe that God is in all relationships, modeling for us the value of community through the relationships of the Trinity. So we love today, and we strive to love even more tomorrow. Let it be so. Amen. And now, family of faith, as you go into this day, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love, and even when it's hard, the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you, in the name of the Great Connector, love itself, go in peace. Thank you for joining us again online in our community of worship together. Hope to see you this week. Tomorrow morning is Bible study. You can join with us live at 10 a.m. or you can watch it later on our Facebook page. And uh, don't forget, if you're local, this Friday night is movie night. We hope to see you there. God bless everybody. Have a great week.